Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about three issues boards should address to prudently monitor sustainability. And with me, which is a natural to discuss this, is Evan Harvey, who's the Director of Corporate Responsibility for NASDAQ. So, Evan, welcome. Thanks for having me. So, Sustainability out there in the real world sometimes is a little bit of a soft issue. It's tough to get directors completely in step with that part of their duties. Um, part of that, I believe, is because people don't understand exactly what sustainability is. So why don't you first give some context to what sustainability is? I think you're right. I think that sometimes it's bucketed as a soft issue. but in reality, it's a metrical and a data-driven effort if you really break it down. We're talking about key performance indicators for, for companies. So on the, on the sustainability side, I always say that the, the metrics that I'm talking about is anything that's not in the financial statement. They call, call them non-financial metrics. They call them ESG for environmental, social, and corporate governance metrics. But it's essentially everything you're not going to find in the Q or the K or the MDNA. So I find that um, the more you have a discussion about how data drives decision making with these kinds of metrics and the metrics that I'm talking about in the environmental space are things like emissions, carbon usage, recycling, wastewater, water usage. On the social side, it's how you treat people. Um, benefits, programs, uh, human resources, uh, policies that bring in a diverse and, and innovative talent pool. On the corporate governance side, it's the structure of your corporation, the, the rules, the checks and balances that are in place to make sure that you are meeting the needs of shareholders and of the internal stakeholders in your, in your organization. Um, but it's, it's a frequent comment that it is a soft um, discipline, that it is a uh, skill set that seems to be apart from traditional financial metrics. And I would argue that it's really not. When you look at things like uh, the metrics that I just mentioned, and you look at what the Bloomberg Terminal does. The Bloomberg Terminal has 120 environmental, social, or go and governance metrics in its terminal. That's the tool that investors are using every day to make investment decisions. If they're able to use that and find enough information on the metrics to make an investment decision, I would suggest that boardrooms probably be uh, well suited to consider these data metrics in their operation. Well, and, and that's further supported by the shareholder proposals that are given. Uh, more often than not, they will fall into the sustainability area. Um, and again, I'm not sure that people define it as broadly as you have defined it, like with the governance and some of the others. Mm -hmm. I think they think, you know, environmental emissions, you know, those kinds of things. But actually, sustainability is that broader issue. And uh, I think it's going to take a while before we get that education out there, you know, on that side. It's really everything that helps your company sustain itself. It's people, it's profits well into the future. It's a long-termism kind of approach. So anything that you can't see in a financial statement that contributes to that mission over the long term is, quote, sustainability. Yeah. So what would you say that um, uh, investors are most concerned about when it comes to um, sustainability? What, what issues seem to rise to the top? Well, the environmental performance stuff was there first. It is the most mature metric. We have established data protocols around how to calculate emissions, carbon usage, recycling, waste stream. I mean, those are all important metrics for the planet. So they extend well beyond the boundaries of the corporation. Um, so investors certainly were there first, and that's a continuing and prevailing uh, concern of theirs, uh, corporate environmental performance. But that's not all they're concerned about. I mean, they're clearly concerned if you look at the SEC's Regulation SK uh, concept paper, which just came out. If you look at the comments in there, there's a lot of investor commentary on political spending, tax policy, foreign ownership, a lot of uh, very diverse metrics that are far from the environmental uh, side of the house uh, that, quote, sustainability investors are now concerned about. Um, and I think that also investors are, by and large, more attuned to the products and the innovation side of it rather than the risk side. I think that boards are traditionally looking at sustainability as a risk oversight function. How are we doing 
how are we not you know right. going to be punished by not doing something well how are we doing something that our peers and competitors are doing and I think that investors generally nowadays are looking into the innovation and product creation side of sustainability this is a, there's a lot of upside in managing this well in the company yeah so um, that would be what the investors are concerned about if you had to marry what boards are concerned about today I, I'm guessing that those don't that they overlap somewhat but not completely. I think investors would love for them to overlap even more, obviously. Right. I mean, they are trying to find avenues of access to boards all the time on this topic. Um, I think that when you talk about boards, their concerns, as I mentioned just previously, are generally risk oversight, enterprise risk manage management, looking from a broad lens across the entire organization and trying to figure out where the red flags are. What are we doing that we uh, should not be doing? What are we not doing that we have to be doing R related to environmental, social, and corporate governance performance? In that context, I think that boards are mostly concerned about uh, nowadays uh, diversity and inclusion, which has a, a, a legal and a risk side to it. Right. There's a lot of pressure to diversify boards in general, both in terms of gender, but also uh, experience levels. Um, uh, repetitive and serial board membership is an issue in, in the sustainability conversation. It's nice to have women on boards. You don't want to have the same woman on 10 boards, right? right. It'd be better probably to have 10 different women in a perfect world. Um, you know, the boards are traditionally looking at the governance side, the, the G part of the ESG, so executive remuneration and pay packages, clawbacks, stuff like that, all kinds of things related to how the company runs itself financially that have a sustainability uh, angle to them. And then I think that boards are probably even more concerned lately about um, legal vulnerabilities, activism, investor activism, as I said before, heading off those kinds of uh, proposal interventions uh, before they get to their, their desk. Well, when you think about your definition that it's everything outside the Q's and the K's, that's, a, that's, that's pretty broad. <laughs> that's pretty broad, yeah. So we try and offer great advice uh, um, to our viewers. And what I want to ask you is, could you sort of cover the th three steps that you would recommend to give, prudence, to give boards prudent focus on the issue of sustainability? What well, three things might you raise? I mean, I think generally awareness is key. You know, being aware that these dynamics are out there in the investor space, in the regulator space, in the exchange space, certainly. So being aware of the fact that sustainability is increasingly a part of corporate performance measurement. Boards are supervisory, you know, bodies. They are meant to give sage advice to uh, the executive team. Uh, and I think that there's no way you could ignore this dynamic in play, especially in, in U.S. business, but globally, too. But the three things, the three concrete things that I would suggest one, and these have all been done before by more progressive companies, more forward-thinking companies, consider the creation of a dedicated standing uh, permanent board dedicated to sustainability. So uh, essentially put it into your uh, board structure and, and process so that every board meeting you have a report from the chairman of the committee. Uh, there, it covers topics such as environmental, social, and governance performance. I don't suggest that this would be a massive reporting effort. They're not going to go through a corporate sustainability report, 150-page PDF. But the board might have very particular concerns related to uh, the company's operation in the ESG space. And it's totally fair for them to ask for that to be part of the formal board process. You and I have talked about this previously. If it's not a committee, if it's not a formalized part of the board process, it might slip through the cracks. It might be uh, not, it might not get the attention at the board level that it probably deserves. I don't know that every company needs to create a committee de dedicated to this. Uh, sometimes it's in the finance or the oversight uh, you know, committees. There are traditional structures that maybe could accommodate it. But certainly a large number of companies, a couple hundred as far as we can tell, have created a dedicated sustainability yeah. committee. Um, the other two things that I would suggest, insist on an annual, maybe even a quarterly report on ESG performance. So, you know, bring somebody from the organization, somebody like me, a VP sustainability, somebody from facilities, somebody on the environmental health and safety side, bring them to the board and ask questions. You know, have them report on what their performance is, how they're trying to trend in a better direction. Um, if the board has particular inquiries or concerns related to their performance, that should be the dialogue that happens openly. I think that on this topic, as opposed to some other topics, there's a bit of a Chinese wall between the um, worker bees of the corporation and, and the board. And then finally, for boards, I would suggest uh, conducting independent research. You know, answer your own questions. Don't take just like good boards, high-functioning boards, don't necessarily take the CEO's word for everything. Uh, they should probably not take my word or anybody else's word for it, too. So they have the uh, capacity to create or undertake original research related to environmental, social, and governance performance. How is our company compare with peers and competitors? What are they doing that we're not doing? What's the next 5, 10, 15 years look like? Because 
this is a long-term concern, how can we measure our, where we want to be five, 10 years from now using these, these metrics. I think that those three things, the, the de dedicated committee, the annual, the annual or quarter, quarterly report, and then the uh, independent research, yeah. those are three tactical things. Evan, thanks for taking the time and letting us dig into an area that we really haven't spent a lot of time, at least on this show, on. And uh, you know, as we've identified today, there is a necessity to, you know, be aware and uh, for board members to be on top of this issue, just like they are in any other, what I might call more popular <laughs> or more focused issues. But uh, I appreciate uh, you spending the time with us today. Thank you very much. And that will conclude this edition of inside America's boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, R.R. Donnelly, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.